very often in computer science, we don't need an arbitrary tree. We really only need a tree that has at most two children, um, a left node and a right node, a true node and a false node. Um, and we call those binary trees. Um, binary trees because each node has at most two children. Um, there are many applications of binary trees. The advantage of binary trees is that they're easier to implement because each node doesn't have a list of children. Each node just has a left node and a right node. Okay. Um, but let's look at some applications of binary trees because this is what you're going to focus on um, today. Um, so here's a binary tree example. It's a decision tree. Um, these are cool. This is what we're going to work on. Um, you can basically create um, a whole program that will answer questions and basically figure out what different types of animals are. Um, so imagine if you start with the first question of like, is it a mammal? Um, if it's yes versus no, you have a different set of questions and different set of possible answers. Um, this program only identifies six animals, right? It's not very sophisticated. But imagine if you train it over time, and this is what one of our practice programming activities are, um, and one of our extensions, it could get a lot smarter. Um, what if you ask, is it a mammal? And they say yes. And then they say, does it have stripes? And you say no. And then you're like, it's a pig. Is that right? And they're like, no. But then you could ask them, okay, give me another question to ask um, with what the answer would be based on that, right? And so, um, like, give me another question that would distinguish your animal from a pig, and you could modify this tree to be more sophisticated. And over time, as, as people kept using it and it kept running, it would get larger and larger and larger and more and more sophisticated, and that would be super cool. So we can definitely use binary trees for, like, decision trees. Um, very common. Here's a cool example. Um, we also can use binary trees for something called Huffman encoding. Um, so encoding is the idea of just taking some sort of data and representing it um, in a certain way. Um, one thing about Huffman encoding is it actually can be used for um, like compression, um, meaning that uh, it's designed such that the, the number of bits that are used to represent something um, is less than it would be if we just like encoded it like an ASCII or Unicode or something. So let's actually look at an example here, because I think this is kind of cool. Um, I'm going to write on the board a sequence. I'm going to get this wrong. So make sure I get this right. All right, so here's what's cool about Huffman encoding. So if I write the final following sequence of bits on the board, we can then try to decode it. So imagine we have 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 5 more zeros, 1, 0. All right, so what's cool about Huffman encoding and what's unique about Huffman encoding is that um, each letter that is encoded might be encoded with a different number of bits. Furthermore, what's cool is that we know when we're done decoding a letter because we get to a leaf node in our tree. So we don't have to waste bits saying things like, here's the end of a letter, okay? Um, and so we've got a practice programming activity related to this too. But the way this works is we start at the root and we go left for zeros and right for ones until we get to a leaf node. So we're starting here. So we start at this zero here. So zero takes us to the left. I'm going to point on my cursor. It makes it a little bit easier. All right, so we start at the root. We're right here. Zero takes us to the left. The next digit is a one, so we go to the right. The next digit is a zero, so we go to the left. We're now at a leaf node for the letter K. So that means these three bits represent the letter K. Okay. 
that's pretty cool because like when it comes to ascii usually we use seven or eight or 16 bits for each letter ascii would be more like seven but we know we're done because we hit a leaf node so now we go back up to the root and we're going to start with zero again so we go left we have another zero we go left we have a one we go right we're at another leaf node it is an o so the next three bits zero zero one resulted in an o all right we go back up to the root the next bit is a one we go to the right the next bit is a zero we go to the left it's an a huh only two bits to encode an a why do you think we only use two bits to encode an a yeah so we're optimizing this for the most common letters all right <laughs> exactly w and p do not show up much because it's a lot of bits to encode those all right back up at the top at the root zero go to the left 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 we're at the leaf node for an l so it took four bits to encode an L. We have two bits left and it's a one zero again, and we know that's an A. So this sequence of bits encoded the word koala. Okay. Kind of neat. So a neat application here of, of binary trees that we're gonna explore more Explore more later. Um, another place where binary trees can be used are expression trees. Okay, so think about um, how a calculator works or how any type of mathematical parsing program would work, like Desmos would work. Um, you need to encompass the order of operations based on the parentheses that the user used to do the same things. So the order in which you do these nodes is, is important. This tree on the left um, represents adding three to four and then multiplying the result by five. Whereas the tree on the right shows what it looks like if we want to multiply four by five and then add that result to three. We have the same leaf nodes here, three, four, five, three, four, five, um, but the order of operations are, are different, okay? But we can encode all of that in a tree. In fact, if we take our expression tree um, and build a tree out of it, we don't need parentheses, right? It's clear what the order of operations are based on the relative relationships in the nodes and the trees. Um, everything is built into the expression tree. Okay. Um, a little bit, a simplified version of like the parsing thing we saw earlier with like the Java programming language. Ooh, we don't need that right now. All right. So different examples of binary trees, expression trees, Huffman encoding, decision trees, all that good stuff.